Greetings, listener, and welcome back to Dark and Disturbed Tales. Stuck between demons and devils, we rejoin Richie Burke in Welcome to Hell Act 2, narrated by Beatles Fanize, guest starring Ghost of 94, Duchess of Darkness, and Cassie from Tales Told in the Dark. (laughs) Hell ain't what I thought it would be. I was caught by a demon, sold to a devil named Sam. Turns out, Sammy wants to be the boss. To do that, he has to bump off the current head honcho, Asmodeus, or Oz as he's known. I know this because another devil named Lucy told me after she made me an offer I couldn't refuse. She took the book Sam had me pick up and replaced it with a fake. I have no idea what it is or for for, or how or how it plays into this or how it plays into Sam's plan, but it must be important. What I know is if I pull this off, Lucy promised to free me and give me a place of my own. When I asked why Sam couldn't get these things for himself, she laughed. According to her, it's because his only real power is manipulation. Without a proxy, he's useless. But the only way he can get one is secondhand. Dad explained why he bought me instead of approaching me on his own. Once I became his property, I was bound to him. The only way to break the bond is either to kill him or convince him to release me. For now, my plan is to play along, but the second I see a way out, I'm taking it. With that in mind, I had to deliver the counterfeit book and hope Sam doesn't notice it. As soon as I stepped outside, I spotted someone walking on the road. It took a second to recognize him. It was Don. Judging by the look on his face, he was confused. He stood at the side of the lot, watching other newcomers wandering around. For a moment, I thought about pulling my blade and carving him up, but I remembered the reset. If I did it, He'd go back to the road, and I wouldn't get this chance again. As usual, Manny had the pit going and was trying to lure in customers. That gave me an idea. I hurried over and got his attention. Hey, big man, you see that guy over there? I asked while directing him to Don. He glared at me then looked at Don and shrugged. Yeah? What about him? I know him. He's gonna come over here and start asking questions. You better get on it before he messes up your money for the day. I wasn't sure he'd take the bait, but when Don started trying to flag people down, he'd seen enough. Angrily throwing off his apron, Manny stormed across the lot and snatched up Don by the neck. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but the next thing I know, he's dragging old Don across the lot and chaining him up behind the stand. Satisfied with my good deed for the day, I made my way to the motel to find Sam. For some reason, I couldn't remember where the room was after the last time. I knew not to go knocking on random doors. I couldn't unsee some of the shit 
I'd seen and I wasn't in a hurry to relive that situation. It took an hour to find him and when I did, he was in the middle of a threesome with a winged devil and a zombie. When I came to the room, several thoughts hit my mind. The room stank like a whorehouse at low tide. And it also smelt like rotten onions and hot dog water. If syphilis had a smell, it would be that room. On top of that, they didn't stop what they were doing when I walked in. Sammy had the she-devil bent over munching zombie muff while he was pounding it out on the other end. Without missing a beat, he motioned for me to sit in a chair next to the door. <laughs> what took you so long? I was just about to... He paused to slap the she-devil on the ass and then continued. Uh, send this one to come get you. Trying not to look, I kept my eyes on the floor. I couldn't find the room. I could wait outside if you need a minute. Stop wasting time. Is that my bag? Wincing at the squishing sound, I nodded. Yeah, that's it. Can I go now? Oh, you're gonna... You're gonna... Oh, go! All right. <sighs> he finished with a grunt, then pulled out and turned to look at me. <sighs> You're gonna go to Akron. It's still a quill from a gang of Luciferians called the Servants. Bring it to me, and I'll think about letting you take a break. Unfortunately... My immediate reaction was to look at him directly. Since I ain't a meat gazer, I locked eyes with him and frowned. How the fuck do I get there? Sammy grinned and glanced over his shoulder. The she-devil and the zombie were still going at it. Turning his attention back to me, he sneered. Walk or take a boat. I don't give a shit. Now get out. I'm busy. Happy to escape the aroma of the room, I gladly stood and turned to leave. Before I could open the door, Sammy spoke up. You're gonna have to pay. I stopped and looked back to see him grabbing something off of the nightstand. For a split second, I thought he might have had a gun and... But... Then he tossed something to me. Instead of catching it, I watched the object sail past me and hit the wall before dropping to the ground. It was a small leather bag, tied closed with a piece of dark string. Looking at it, then at him I asked, What the fuck's this for? Coins for the captain. You gotta pay to take the boat. That's enough to get you to Akron and back. Don't say I never did anything for you. Now get out. He didn't have to say it again. Scooping up the pouch, I quickly exited the room. When the door shut behind me, I tried to shake the stink off of me and headed for the barbecue stand. Don looked pitiful. He was doing everything he could think of to get that collar off and it wasn't working. He was trying to break the chain with a rock when Manny came storming over. The big man grunted and raised his arm, then brought his ham-sized fist down on top of Don's head. I was hoping it would drive him into the ground like a fucking railroad spike, but it just knocked him out. Once he was on the ground, Manny stomped on his right leg, snapping it like a twig. Letting out another grunt, the big man got back to work, serving his customers. With a little pep in my step, I strolled over laughing. Since Don was unconscious, he wouldn't see me, but I was fine with that. 
I just hoped Manny kept him alive long enough for us to have a little chat. Kicking some dirt on him, I went to talk to the big man. While I was waiting for him to finish with his customers, I noticed they weren't paying with money. When someone came up, Manny would ask, Do you agree? If they said yes, he stamps their head with a small brand he keeps over the green flame, then gave them food. If they said no, they get nothing. When he finally finished, I approached him. I see you're having a good day. Wiping his hands on his apron and giving me a skeptical frown, he grumbled. What do you want? Seeing he wasn't in the mood for conversation, I got straight to the point. Pointing to Don, I asked if he could keep him alive till I got back. At first, he said no, but in the end, we came to an agreement. When I got back, I would run the stand while he took a vacation. In return, he would keep old Don breathing. Well, with that little business squared away, I went to talk with Lucy. I had questions about the quill and the gang holding it. The chimes above the door sounded as I walked in. Lucy was sitting behind the counter reading a book. Mocking something she said to me back on the road, I spoke up. What brings a lady like you to a place like this? Rolling her eyes and shaking her head, she licked her finger, then dog-eared the page she was on. Bad luck. So, how'd things go? The little fucking bastard wants me to steal a quill from some gang called the Servants? You wouldn't happen to know anything about them, would you? Lucy thought about it for a second, then nodded. Yeah, they're Luciferians. Low-budget shitheads who think they can squirm their way onto Lucifer's good side. Joke's on them, though. Lucifer doesn't have a good side. The quill is from one of the fallen angels. Sammy needs it if he's going to use the book. Since there's no way to fake it, you're going to have to give it to him. The good thing is, without the book, it's useless. The downside of that is, when it doesn't work, he's probably going to torture you to find the real book. Oh, just fucking wonderful. So how am I supposed to steal this fucking thing? I don't know where it is, and I have no idea who the servants are. For the first time since I met her, Lucy looked really, really concerned. Can't really help you on this one. The only servant I've met is in the pit, and I don't know where they keep the quill. There's someone who might be willing to help you, but he's not going to be easy to convince. When you get to Akron, go to a place called Trail's End. Tell the guards at the gate you're there to speak with Moloch. Let them know I sent you. They'll let you in. Oh, just fucking dandy. Is there anything else? Yeah, Moloch's got some habits you're not gonna like. No matter what you see at Trail's End, keep your opinion to yourself. Nodding my head in understanding, a question popped into my head. What's your stake in all of this? I understand why Sammy's doing this. He wants to be the boss. Why are you trying to stop him? What's in this for you? Lucy looked at me and smiled. Sam and I are the only two devils here. Everyone else is a demon, a lost soul, or a fledgling. Only one devil can move up in the ranks, and I plan on it being me. Well, that makes sense. 
But if you knew about this shit, why don't you get it yourself? I was working on a different angle. My plan was to get him sent to the pit. But when I found out what he was up to, I had to get involved. As for why I hadn't gotten the items, well, you were already doing it. Why fix what works? Shaking my head and turning to walk away, I stopped. So, which one am I? Laughing, Lucy stood up. <laughs> I'll make a deal with you. Make it back here in one piece, with the quill, and I'll tell you anything you want to know. With that said, she stepped out from behind the counter and walked over to me. Everything about her was intoxicating. From her lips to her hips, she was flawless. Being around her gave me a buzz that lasted for hours. I was hooked. When she stepped in close and whispered, Go get him, Tiger. The room exploded with a blinding white light. As my vision finally cleared, I found myself standing on the road facing the sign for the Blue River Crossing. For the first few seconds, <laughs> Lucy's scent lingered in the air around me, breathing it in and closing my eyes. I let the buzz of her presence wear off, and just as I was about to open them, I heard, Psst. Ah, fuck. I already knew who it was, but I wasn't expecting to open my eyes and nearly be touching noses. I was startled by how close she was. I jolted back and nearly lost my balance. Ah, shit! The chort burst out laughing. After a few seconds, she shook her head and wiped away a tear. Ah, oh, I needed that. Switching to a childlike voice, she asked. What you doing? Seeing her bat-like features and pale gray skin made me cringe a little. I don't have the fucking book. Go away. Going back to her normal voice, she rolled her eyes. Like I was getting on her nerves. I told you, I don't want the book. That's not why I'm here. Rather than entertain a conversation, I brushed past her and headed for the path to the Blue River. As I got further away, she called out, Oh, come on. Ask me why I'm here. Without looking back, I held up my middle finger and yelled, Go fuck yourself! A few seconds later, she was in front of me again. Ask me. Ignoring her, I kept walking, hoping she'd get the point and go away. She didn't. When I reached the end of the path, she was there, waiting for me. Ask me. Fine. Fuck it. What the fuck do you want? Why are you here? Happy? Glad you asked. From now on, everywhere you go, I go. Congratulations. I'm your new shadow. No, no, no. Fuck off. Go find somebody else to play with, you little fucking freak. Nope. Sorry. What's your name again? <sighs> Without thinking, I told her my name, and she smiled. Well, Richard, I don't know if you know this, but you should never tell a chort your name. It's official now. We're bonded. I'm Viv, by the way. So where are we off to now? Oh, just goddamn fucking great. Realizing that she just tricked me into bonding with her. Oh, fuck.
I shook my head and walked past her. Oh, I'm headed to Captain Charlie's boat. <sighs> when we got there, the boat was still there, but I didn't see him. After calling out to him a few times, I went on board to look around. The ship was empty. The only thing I found was a few bottles of liquor and a box of cigars. Grabbing a bottle for myself, I found a place to sit and made myself comfortable. For the first time since I had arrived, I had a chance to relax, and I was going to make the most of it. After taking a few swigs from the bottle, I kicked my feet up, leaned back, and closed my eyes. It felt great not to be walking or running from some fucking creature. <sighs> Between the subtle rocking of the boat and the sound of the water splashing against the hull, I dozed off. There are no dreams in hell. Sleep is just an empty void keeping you from truly resting. As shitty as that sounds, it didn't last. Viv's stank waffled in the air, and I, I instantly woke up. Oddly enough, she was standing at the front of the boat fishing. She cast her line out into the water, and after a short wait, she reeled something in. It, it wasn't a fish. What she pulled up looked like a deflated person. Clothes and awe. Viv sneered at it, shook her head, then tossed it back into the water. Recasting her line, letting out a sigh, she glanced back at me. Good, you're awake. The captain's coming. She pointed to the rear of the ship and I saw Charlie strumming across the deck shouting, Well, holy fucking shit. This must be my lucky day. I get to kill two dumb son of a bitches for trespassing on my ship. Coming to a stop, he looked at Viv with anger and turned his attention to me. You better have gold and a good excuse, or the two of you are going in the fucking river. I could see he was serious, but it was hard not to laugh at him. Pulling the pouch of coins from my pocket and tossing it to him, I smirked. I need a round trip to Acheron. That should cover it, right? Charlie opened the pouch and dumped the coins in, a, in the palm of his hand looking at them then shifting his eyes between viv and i he shook his head where's the other half a round trip for two cost eight coins not four unless you aren't paying for the trip coming back there's something wrong with your math realizing what he was getting at i stopped him Hey, she's not with me. I've got my fare. You can throw her off the boat. Hell, I'll even help you. Reeling in another skin suit, Viv looked over. She smiled, then turned to face us. He's joking. Richie loves me. He's just being an asshole right now. We'll have the other half when you pick us up. Isn't that right, Richard? Charlie frowned at me and sucked his teeth. You dumb bastard. You told it your name? You're never gonna get rid of that fucking thing now. His frown faded and he laughed at me. Yeah, I'll get you to Acheron. But you better have the other half when the time comes. Understood? Letting out a delighted squeal, Viv took her catch and went below deck. 
Captain Charlie gave me a disgusted look, then walked off, leaving me alone with my bottle. After taking several long gulps, I stretched out on a nearby bench. If Acheron was worse than this place, I was going to need as much rest as I could get.